What's up YouTube, Dirty Dan Municipal Man here, and we have intake manifolds today. In front of me, we've got a original equipment for Motorcraft performance improved intake manifold. And here we have a Professional Products Typhoon intake manifold. So this is gonna be a comparison between these two intakes, between stock and aftermarket. Um, before I get into it, I will say that the Professional Products Typhoon intake has been out of production for a little while. So if you find one of these, more than likely, it will be a used intake. As I cannot find anybody who still sells them new anymore, I think these have actually been out of production for a while. But I still see them pop up occasionally. And I, in my opinion, this is a great alternative for an, an all-aluminum intake. So right off the bat, between the Ford intake and the aftermarket, you will notice that the Ford intake here has an aluminum crossover and this uh, composite plastic material here. So these are, this manifold is pretty lightweight. I'd say maybe 15 pounds at most. And in the back, the coolant exit port or the, the coolant port here is also plastic. Um, these are notorious for cracking on the Crown Vicks or cars that have had a lot of heat cycles. Um, if you buy a P71 Crown Vic, you can just almost guarantee to plan on replacing your intake manifold at some point because one of the most common things to see posted is these crack, but um, still. So going over that there here, going over it a little bit more, you'll see you've got, uh, this is where your fuel injectors will go. These are the manifold mounting bolts. These are these are where your spark plug coil packs go to. I believe your fuel rails bolt here and here. I'm not sure what bolts here. I can't think of that offhand. I think it's something related to the EGR. This is where your plenum bolts to. You'll notice you have an, an O-ring that is actually part of the manifold there. And then your coolant crossover. Now, being that this intake is off of a 2007 Crown Victoria, you will notice that there is not a coolant temperature sensor here. Um, the later model Crown Vicks do not use the coolant temperature sensor. But uh, other than that, this is a stock factory plastic manifold here. And then we'll take a look at the runner length here. So the biggest thing is, the biggest things with these manifolds here is that these are, the general consensus is these are good for most applications. Even a mildly bolt-on, or uh, a mildly built application, this manifold is, the general consensus is it flows more than enough air to support most of your basic bolt-on mods. So people will tell you in the forums that this is the absolute best and the only intake manifold that you can get. So now let's go over to the professional products intake. So this intake is obviously all aluminum and is definitely substantially heavier it is all cast aluminum. It's probably, I would say this has got to be at least 30 pounds. It's twice the weight of this manifold. This is pretty easy to lift with one hand. This guy here takes a little more effort, but he's a, he's a hefty boy. So a couple of things to notice is that the, where the plenum would mount, there's no gasket to be used here. Uh, the factory one, like we already pointed out earlier, has that O-ring. This one does not have one. Um, all your fuel injectors are in the exact same location that they would be on the stock intake. You'll notice that all the same bolt holes on the stock intake are also in the exact same spots on this Typhoon intake here. So pretty much the Typhoon intake here is a direct bolt-on. All the hardware and everything will bolt up to the same place. Um, if you have a car that does not have the coolant temperature sensor, you will have to plug this, but I believe this is a 3 8 NPT. I might have screwed that up. I just went to Home Depot, got a plug, wrapped it with Teflon tape, and I think this was like two bucks, and this should plug up the hole pretty good. Um, but other than that, this is a direct bolt-on. So the biggest difference aside from weight, too, that I've noticed with this is the runners. The runners on the professional product products are noticeably shorter than the factory intake. Let's see if I can get this guy to sit evenly here. I'm trying to do all this one-handed. If you notice, factory intake might sit about an inch or two higher. So the factory intake does have longer runners 
but the professional products looks like it has more uh, volume on the actual inside of the intake. You probably can't see very well. But either which way, the professional products, despite the shorter runner length here, looks like it has more volume. Professional products says that the RPM operating range of this intake is between 1,500 to 6,500 RPM. And they say that on their test Mustang, this manifold got 20 horsepower and 25 foot-pounds of torque. Um, being that this is going to go on a stock car that's not modified, I highly doubt I will see a difference, but I'd be more than happy to post my results once I get this installed. The biggest benefit about going to this over the plastic intake here is that the coolant, uh, the coolant port in the back is all aluminum. This intake manifold, in theory, should not crack and leak coolant like this one would. More than likely, the problem that you'll see is the, the gasket on this intake will probably fail long before this gasket, uh, before this intake itself would. Again, it's all cast aluminum. Um, another interesting thing to note too is this intake manifold is a three-piece manifold as well. You'll notice on the bottom there, you've got all this hardware. And I wanna say, I think uh, an article that I read about this intake here is that these can all come apart. So if you wanted to take the bottom runners off this intake and port it, it makes easy access for, uh, for you to do that. Um, in my application, which is a mostly stock vehicle, I have no intentions of porting this. I mean, maybe later on if I ever do a supercharger or something crazy like that, maybe I'll think about it, but either there. So some other technical information about this manifold is, as I mentioned earlier, this is compared to the stock, this is almost a direct bolt-in, but as I mentioned, this one is out of production. So you are going to have to do some uh, figuring out on what you're going to do because not all of the stock hardware is going to work. A couple things right off the bat, you're going to need to figure out a gasket for this, but I got you. This is a Felpro plenum gasket for a 2000 Crown Vic. And fun fact, oh, would you look at that? Oh, I, I don't have it sit. It's a perfect fit. On this intake so there you go your gaskets figured out you will have to trim the tabs out of that so if you get this you're you'll have to source a gasket but again the gasket from a 2000 plenum gasket from a 2000 crown vic will work um, your factory gaskets should work as well these ones are not ford these are fell pro um, i always if i can't get factory fell pro is what i run all the time um, another thing you're going to have to figure out, too, between this and the original equipment is look at the flange here. This is where your bolt holes goes. Look at how thick that is. It's not nearly that thick on this one. Chunky, thin. So as a result on this specific intake here, actually, when the intakes are tilted like this on their side, the differences in runner length is much more noticeable here. These runners are definitely probably about an inch or two longer than what you see over here. But um, going back to more technical information, you're going to have to figure out bolts because your stock manifold bolts will not work. They're going to be too long. However, I've done more of the legwork for you, and this is what you need. These I purchased these at Home Depot, and I have a part number for you. So you can find these at Home Depot here. Here's the, uh, you're gonna, you will need washers. So here's the washers as well. And this is a black oxide coated bolt. Even with the gasket, even with this, uh, the gasket on the bottom of this thing here, I'll try to, I will try to illustrate here with one hand, but it's kind of difficult. But even with the gasket and a washer on here, plenty of bite into the head with this bolt here as a matter of fact i'm pretty sure mmr module motorsports racing sells these bolts and these stainless steel washers in a kit for like 50 bucks um, i can tell you that i bought eight of these bolts and all of these washers for 14 dollars at home depot so not to try to uh, steal business away from mmr or whatever but these, I'm pretty positive these are the same bolts that MMR is selling for 50 bucks. 
and again it was 15 bucks at home depot gaskets and all that other stuff there you can find that in rock auto but again i just wanted to make a little bit of a rambling video comparing these two intakes here uh the biggest test is going to be the performance versus the stock versus this one here and as i mentioned earlier this is going on a pretty much stock vehicle with uh, the only mod being a cat back exhaust and mufflers so i will definitely post what the results are i didn't buy this intake because i'm expecting crazy horsepower i bought this intake because it's all aluminum it will never crack and I plan on keeping the car that this is going on for a very, very long time. Like, if I can have my way, this intake will still be on the car when I give it to my great-grandkids. You know? So, I don't plan on getting rid of this car. So, I will update you when this is installed and how it works compared to the stock. I'm honestly not really expecting a difference, but still. In my personal opinion, this looks like a pretty solidly put together intake. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure there's some flaws. I'm sure there's some flaws in it. It is aluminum, and I noticed the castings are not entirely perfect in some places, and the aluminum is soft. Uh, as a matter of fact, I am going to have to tap this uh, bolt hole out because the previous car that it was on, it looked like the guy when he was removing this bolt stripped it out. So I'm just going to have to tap threads into that. But um, the, so be careful. I don't know. I like this intake. I'm really excited to get it on and I will let you guys know how it goes. So this is just a little bit of an information compared to the stock intake and my thoughts on that there. And I will update when it's installed. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me rant. If you've got any questions or comments, post them up and I'll be happy to answer you. I really, I've got my channel small. You know, I, I just do YouTube as a hobby, so I really do try to make a point to answer as many comments as I can. So peace out, everybody, and have a good night.